What's up, my wizards? Dev from the SBMTG, that's Strictly Better Magic the Gathering. I'm here today with who? Tony. Right, as usual. We're going to do our Dragons of Tarkir Black set review today. We're going in reverse order, so we're almost home. We're more than halfway home now. Like, I think we can probably go ahead and kick it off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see about Black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> foreshadowing. Our first card that we want to look at today, this is Acid Spewer Dragon, and uh, we can move on. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> seriously, it's just another one of the uh, uncommon 3-3 three, three dragons for 6. It's got flying and death touch, so it's a little more relevant than the others. Yeah, death touch is good. Yeah, death touch, yeah. first strike, hexproof, those three are the only abilities yeah. we've seen on these. Specifically that we those about. three are good. Uh, and... I don't know right good. <laughs> <But> <laughs> They're acceptable. Yeah, th this is probably acceptable and sealed. Like I said yesterday, you know, I, I hate on these during the set reviews, but when I open it and seal it, I'll be like, you know, probably. probably I'll probably play is. this. Um, <laughs> Moving right along, yeah. though, uh, we have a card that I will actually kind of look forward to playing in sealed. Yeah, uh, I'll play this in sealed. Um, we've got M. Ambuscade Shaman. Ambus I think you did as good as, as anyone Ambu could with that. Ambuscade yeah. Shaman. Well, one way or the other, like, You've got options for this guy. Yeah, I definitely think that he sees good seal play. I mean, obviously, he's he does. I think he's good enough to go in the dash check, like not get cut from the dash check, obviously. But he's a fire. He's a fire card in the limiteds. But we could probably move on, because this card's exciting. Yeah, this is probably one of the best uh, black cards in the set. Yeah, which is saying a lot because we don't we don't know how much we actually love this card, but it's it is a real it's it's an exciting card. Mm -hmm. This is Blood Chin Fanatic. Um, yeah, I like Blood Chin. I've thought a lot about this guy, you know, while I was doing the spoiler video for him, and all the way up to now, I think about this guy a lot. I love Warriors. I think that's going to be a good deck. Yeah, um, Warriors just seems to be getting stronger and stronger with each set that's been coming out. Yeah, lately. absolutely. This seems um, like a really good piece for Warriors. Yeah, uh, if nothing else, like. You know, maybe, uh, I think in some of our playtesting stuff with Warriors, it's uh, around like turn five, turn six kind of finish if yeah. you get a full good aggro draw. Yeah, if everything goes right. You know? Yeah, so. Uh, it's a little too slow for the other aggro decks in the format. It doesn't compete well with other aggro decks. Yeah. yeah, so this will be that thing that helps you like push across for the final win because after yep. you swing in with everything, you can get some extra damage out of your highest power guys by being able to sack them for just two yeah, minutes. Exactly. I picture this. Um, Two ways. Two ways you can use this. First of all, as you know, you swing in for whatever, five, six, and then you get that couple extra damage in by sacrificing guys and you win the game that way because you can end up, you know, turning a swing of six into a swing of twelve if you have a mana for it. So, yeah. there's that. Um, and then there's also the sort of against other aggro decks. You're gaining that life, so it's giving you a little bit of reach against those decks. Now yeah. you have to sacrifice guys, so you're losing board position against other aggro decks. So there's kind of a give and take mm -hmm. looked at from that angle. But I do think that Bloodshin will will all try to play it. We'll oh, all yeah. try to play the guy and see, you know. I haven't play tested with him yet. I do want one of my deck decks to be Black White Warriors. Just one of the specifically so I can play with this guy. Yeah. Um and see how good he is. But for now I think that he's definitely he's got lots of potential. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on, though, we've got another fine warrior card. Yep. Uh, two mana, two two. Two mana bear. Bloodshed Rager. And when he attacks, uh, warrior creatures you control can't be blocked this turn except Ooh. by two or more creatures. Yep. So that's really going to help you get your guys through in your warrior yep. I am all on board with this card. I'm, I'm on the train. I'm not on the caboose. I'm back. I'm up front driving the train on this one. We actually get a good, reasonable effect off that, of it that instead a, of a drawback. Messing up combat in that way is a really, really desirable effect. Um, yeah, very good. And very it's also good. really important against the other aggro decks. Yeah, that's, we were just talking about other aggro decks, you know, how it doesn't stack up very well. But this this helps it go a long way, mm -hmm. you know. Because the aggro decks now, like, if they want to try, if they do have anything open for blocking that they ha weren't able to swing with, now they have to choose on whether or not they can actually... Yeah, like, block or not. They can't just like leave their siege rhino up forever or something, you know, and there are a lot of stuff. Corsair Crewfix and Sylvan Carry to become less of a thing because, you know, you yeah. have to worry about them blocking and that All that's the time. right now for aggro decks in the format, those two cards are the major hurdles, the speed bumps. So um this card helps you get around those very, very easily. And I like I like Rager a lot. I actually might like him more than Fnatic for those decks. You know, because I think that with for Fnatic is a question, mm -hmm. Rager is pretty much an auto include though. So Yeah. But, yeah, I can I can get behind that. We can move on, though. Oh, yeah. This is um, one of my favorite combat tricks in the set, actually. This is uh, Butcher's Glee. And, you know, usually in every set, Black gets one decent combat trick. This is this is this one this time around. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the lifelink is not negligible. It's very good. Uh, regenerate is incredibly important. That means it will definitely survive no matter what. 
Um, yeah. And the uh, plus three plus O means you are more than likely going to be able to kill whatever you trade with. Yeah, exactly. Like, and this, it's a guaranteed, like, at least three point life gain. Yep. Um, at least four, really. Yeah, at least at least a four point. You're swinging with your zero, and they're like, "You're doing a thing." This I like that it has um, offensive and defensive applications. You know, you get that extra damage and the life link mm. through. The life link is just so good on this card, honestly. Um, in some ways, I'd rather it be flying because I mean, obviously this is black. That's not going to happen. But I'd rather it be flying because you know all the dragons and stuff in this set would be a little more relevant and sealed. But same time, life link is always relevant in limited play. It's a very good ability. I would rather have it be uh, just. Death Touch and regenerate it because that way it's a guaranteed kill. Yeah, true. I'd love it to be Death Touch, but we'll see that card soon. Yes, it's actually. Actually, oh, excuse me, it's the next card. Yeah. So let's move on to this, actually. Uh, right. Moving on, though, we get uh, Coat with Venom. It's Black's other really good combat trick. This is a fantastic one combat mana. Trick. Yep. That's great. Uh, you get a two toughness bonus out of that, so it does help ensure your guys' uh, survival, as well as gaining death touch, so you're guaranteed to kill something if yep. it gets blocked. Guaranteed. If they have black in their deck at the pre-release, I would play around this card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, any creature that... Uh, uh, yeah, I would be playing around this bo and... Both uh, of them, yeah. Butcher's Glee. Moving on, we have uh, another guard that is underratedly incredible. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we, we talked about this. I think the first reading of this, it's underwhelming. You yeah. don't care. Uh, by the way, this is uh, Corpse Weft. Corpse Weft. A three right. mana for an enchantment that just kind of sits there to not seem like it's going to do much of anything. That seems like a bad investment. However, for two mana to exile one or more creature guards from your graveyard and get double that power toughness yeah. out of it. If you remove two guys, you get a 4-4. Four, four. That's yeah. pretty good. For two mana. Yeah. A two mana 4-4 four, four for removing two guys pretty from good. your graveyard. I mean, it would be that's an overtime investment great. of five, but that's still fine because you get to make more guys. And we've got so much stuff in the format that enables Delve. You know, we have um, what is it, Wayfinder Seder. We have Commune with the Gods. You know, uh, you've got Tormenting Gods that'll help you get here. We've got Wayfinding Seder that'll help you uh, get your land drops. Oh, you say to Wayfinder. That's the guy. Oh, that's say to Wayfinder. Yeah. Either way, I mean, the, it's that dyslexia. guy. I really want this card to to break into standard. You know, I. I think this is one of those that people just look at and they dismiss immediately, but this is added value. I wish that it cost one mana less to play it. To, it's casting cost. It was one mana less. Um, yeah, but, it know. was like two mana to play and two mana to activate. I'm never satisfied. Yeah, we yeah. always want things to be Sometimes cheaper. I'm just like my mother. She's never <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> and it still can happen at instant speed. Yeah, you can do this at instant speed. That's really good. Yeah, yeah so. You can do this during a combat step and get a 6-6 six, six or something. You know, It's really not hard to get a 6-6. Six, six. That's three mm. creatures. Three yeah. whole creatures in your graveyard. Big deal, you know. It's it's not that hard to get. Mm -mm. So, I like it. Oh, but yeah. probably moving on. Are you ready? I think. Oh, oh yeah. Move, uh, I'm just right making along. sure. We got the next uh, card. This is um. Is it my turn? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. We got Danimal Pact. Um, I've I've had a lot to say about this card during this for the video, and it all I think stands up the same. Aggro could play this. I don't think it slots into control. But aggro could play this pretty easily, either to draw itself a few cards or to sort of fireball or profane command those last few points of, of life that it needs to, to win the game. Yeah, so. um, and I'm on board with Devin there because I've used Sign and Blood for that, and Sign and Blood is just two mana for draw two cards and lose two life. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, Sign and Blood is... Some people, I have heard that, the, the comparison to Sign and Blood. People say Sign and Blood is strictly better than this, but these people don't understand the definition of strictly better, you know? Yeah, this is actually going to be strictly better because you can judge how many cards you're going right. to draw right. if you're using it for yourself, or how much life you're going to hit your opponent for when you actually yeah. go for them. That's the thing, is people are like, well, you can Sign mm -hmm. and Blood them, too, you know, and mm -hmm. that's whatever. But I don't want to pay four mana for Sign and Blood either, but mm -hmm. I don't mind paying six mana for four damage, damage. or four cards, you know. That that makes this, I think, maybe not better than Sign and Blood, Sign and Blood seen a lot of play in its day. Yeah, name, I'm going to say it is just on par with Sign and yeah. Blood. I do like Daniel Pact, I'm not... Sure, about standard, but you know how every color gets a few cards that break into standard? I think this is a um, candidate. Yeah, so. uh, again, we've seen white-black warrior decks, and this could be a potential kind of finisher for right. them. I, I, that's what we were talking about before we started um, shooting this video, is that it could be a good finisher for warriors. So. Yeah. But moving on, here's a silly card. Uh, yeah, this is so silly. Uh, uh, Deadly Wanderings, um, five-mana enchantment. 
and as long as you control exactly one creature, that creature gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and has death touch and lifelink. Yeah. Uh, this could be, I mean, potentially a limited bomb if you're going for that kind of build where you just have, like, a few creatures and you're trying to build a battleship. <laughs> when your one creature is a 6-6 uh, six, six flyer, you know? <laughs> yeah, that means he becomes a 8-6 flyer with dead death touch, lifelink. Yeah, just death unstoppable three. juggernaut, you know? Yeah, that's really relevant. I don't really like this card at mm -hmm. all. At all. But watch, someone will come by and be like, you only need the one creature, idiot, and just like, make something with this. But even, even if you had a deck that only played the one creature or something, like this would just be one more, I think. So, yeah. Screw this card. Uh, <laughs> moving right along, though, we get uh, Deathwind. For Deathwind. Black and X at instant speed and target creature gets neg X, neg X until end of turn. Now, what we were talking about strictly better a second ago. <laughs> this is a strictly better Heat Ray. Heat Ray was a card we've seen in standard a few times. It's a red card, it's at instant speed. X and a red, deal X damage to target creature. This is strictly better because it can kill indestructible creatures. This is very true. That so, was the point I was going to make about this. Uh, yeah. Neg X, Neg X gets around indestructible guys, which is very important because we still have gods in this format, yep, and they are still around. Same play. Gets around guys with Regenerate, uh, a.k.a. your Rakshasa Death, Death Dealer, Dealer in Standard, you know. Um, just does good things. I just think that um, in Standard, you know, we have... Better, better We have way better removal spells. Like Stuff like this is, is more or less strictly limited, you know? Yeah, and limited in any limited format, this is going to be a fine removal spell. And yeah, you should it play it. Time. You should play it. Yeah. yeah. So, you think that's good? Yeah, moving right along. Oh, do that. Uh, next up, we got our next Regent. Yeah, Deathbringer Regent. Um, you know, these seven mana big guys. And some of them are good, some of them are trash, but this guy, I think, is definitely on the higher end of... Of the scale. This guy's the, the most you'll pay for a card in this whole set, actually. He's at the very, very top of the curve, you know. Um, and one could say Icefall region is definitely better. The red region is probably better. You know, oh, for red. constructed play. For constructed play. Oh, yeah, all day. Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, I really like this guy as maybe a one-of and a blue-black control because he's potentially an extra board wipe against those extra yeah. aggro decks. You know, people the always say... The problem is that he's seven. Yeah, Man. that's what I was going to say. People always say that, and I always say it, too. I hate paying so much for cards, but, I don't know, in Control, like, eventually you'll be able to play this guy somewhat comfortably. It's just, you know, it's all about getting there. At seven mana, you they will... probably won't last that long. They'll just blow, blow you out before you can play this guy. So yeah. He's kind of a standard trap. I will say the thing I like most about this guy is that he'll be a great, like, dollar rare to put in your cube. I think he's really good for cube play. So, mm. you know, aside from that, I got not... I don't have much to say about him. But, yeah... Yeah. We could probably go on yeah. from there. Um, this is Defeat. Now, at first glance, this is a quite a powerful card. But I have at least a couple of arguments against it. Um, now, it is removal. It is removal. You'll likely play this card. Don't get me wrong. A one-of in your seal pool. That's more than fine. But we have literally strictly better cards. This is not a combat trick of any kind because it's sorcery yeah. speed. Sorcery speed. That just um, that really hurts the card. You know, it does kill your morphs and your manifests and stuff like that. Yeah, it takes out plenty of uh, reasonable creatures in limited. Yeah. Uh, you'll Just see, so you can see plenty of use out of it as a, you know, a one of, maybe a two or three of, if you get that many and you don't get any other form of removal. Yeah, that's the thing is I might play two of these main and seal, but then like board any other copies that I get. Yeah, yeah de defeat doesn't even, doesn't even do well against dash. So, I don't know. You'll probably, like we said, you'll probably play this, but I don't think it's as good as it looks when you first read it. Mm -hmm. No. But here's a card. Uh, moving right along, we got Duress. Duress is back. Yeah. Hey. Free print of Duress. Man. Yay. Hey. What, are you okay? You are you, are you all right with that? Oh, yeah. I love Duress. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Duress is good. Yeah. Uh, this is good. Because uh, once Thought Seize rotates out of standard, yep. we're going to need something to take its place. We'll have Despise and Duress, and that way we still have two counters, uh, two good uh, discard spells. Yeah, look yeah. at your hand and choose a card and make a discard. Yeah, I mean, this is the exact opposite of Despise, obviously. Yeah. Um, but... I think it's getting more relevant because we're seeing a lot of control in the meta. Now, we've still got our tokens decks. We've still got Abzan, but blue-black and after, from what we've seen in, in blue-white in this set, it looks like blue-white control may finally be oh, the yeah. thing that we all wanted it to be. Oh. So, control is more relevant now, making Duress by proxy more relevant. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I like Duress in this format. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, moving right along. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's fine. I think it's your turn. Is it? I just did the rest. No, I could have sworn I talked. Yeah, I talked all. The whole thing was me talking about the rest. So I'll talk about Dutiful Attendant because I don't have much to say. I'll say that this is a card I like way worse than um, Grave Digger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. 
I yeah. hate the fact that you're trying to force a card to die so you can get a better <sighs> creature card back from your graveyard to your hand. Don't get me wrong. Uh, basically, really what that means is you're just going to try and jump block with it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one thing that, and this isn't incredibly Christmas land because he is a common, but you get in the dutiful attendant loop. If you get two of them, mm -hmm. you know, you play them, you get the one guy back, you chump block, and then, and then you, you know, just keep, you keep doing that. You always will have a chump blocker that way, right. but for three mana. So the dutiful attendant loop might be a thing, but I doubt it. Um, aside from that, I mean, we all know and love Gravedigger, and this has one less power at one less mana. But it's not just like when he enters the battlefield, it's when he dies. And that, that makes him a little more quirky. Yeah, if it was so. still enter the battlefield, or even, even as it is, if it was just uh, two power and one toughness, since you want to chump block with him, at least that way you can like swing sideways with him. Yeah. And if they block him, you get extra effect. If they don't block him, you get two damage. This through, is one of those guys you're just like, I want him to die right now. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm a dude. Hit, block him. I dare you to block this guy. You know, and we do have um, one more thing, I think. We have um, exploit in this set. So you're more able to sort of control what creatures are in your graveyard mm -hmm. and when he dies. You're, you're able to control that. Yeah, yeah, easier. this is true. So he, he, may, he might be solid in sealed, but, mm. you know, I... I this card says mediocre to me. He has added value. Added value is always good. He replaces himself, but it's a very conditional replacement effect. Yeah, so. si uh, since Devin just made the exploit thing, uh, I'm sure the exploit limited deck will become some... Somebody's going to try and make something. That thing. Although and I, this guy does slot into that really nicely, actually. I don't think we have enough stuff with exploit, first of all. I think that a I, lot of people waited a long time for that ability. Cause mm -hmm. A lot of people love that on like Cartel Aristocrat and stuff. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we finally got an ability, you know, finally, a keyword ability that just does that. And it's not as, as good as I would have wanted it to be. So yeah. I hope we see exploit more in the future. You know, It seems like one of those evergreen abilities. They can bring this back in a later set if they wanted to. Uh, moving right along, though, we've got another piece of uh, actually great limited removal. Yeah, I think this is this is fair removal. Uh, yeah. This is uh, flatten at four mana. It's target creature neg four neg four until end of turn at instant speed. Yeah, and it's a common. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was a card called Throttle we had in Cons Limited, mm -hmm. and it was um, the same card for five mana. It's four and a black. Uh. Yeah, I think you're right. No, I, th I think it was a, either the same or a very similar card for one extra, so it's strictly better than that. Mm -hmm. um, if that is the case, I'm almost sure it was, and people still played Throttle in Limited, mm -hmm. and so you'll play this. Oh, you'll yeah. play this in Limited, definitely. It's, it's That's good removal. <laughs> yeah. uh, not, not in Standard or anything. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about 4-mana instant speed removal that Mike C. play in Standard, <laughs> I'm going to let you talk about this next card. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, next up, we got Foul Renewal. Love the art on this thing, too. Oh, uh, yeah, that is true. I want it in foil, with orange foil. Looks oh, good. yeah. Um, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about this card for a second. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? What, yeah. uh, what do you think? <laughs> target uh, creature card from your hand, your hand, target creature card no. And where it says it's the toughness of the card return this way. Right, so you get a guy back, and you kill a guy, yeah. and it's instant speed. Uh, and it's splashable. If this was return him from uh, your graveyard oh, be, to the battlefield. That would be busted. Then if that was the case. Yeah. I would be completely behind this. Everyone would. That would be yeah. one of the better cards in the entire set. Yeah, I would be completely case. behind this. Uh, however. I still, I, I, I really uh, like this. Go ahead. You said uh, however. Uh, go ahead. I can see a standard option for this, but it's not something that would be a very common thing. It would be... Uh, some form of uh, control deck with black where prob your big finisher is going to be something like uh, Pearl Like Ancient where you have like seven toughness and yeah. you know for some Got reason a lot another, of big toughness creatures in the format right the, about now you yeah know? that's it's true so there's plenty of toughness all creatures the Jurgens, you can target with that all the Dargons that yeah. we see right now and not only that but all the stuff that's sort of meant to go in the Assault Formation deck in Standard the thing um, that, you know, makes creatures hit for their toughness instead of their power. Yeah, I will oh. say this much. Uh, there is an added bonus of this, that since it's neg-x, neg -X, it does uh, kill indestructible guys. Indestructible. Uh, it also lets, in Abzan, in better? Abzan it gets your Siege Rhino back and kills a guy. Mm -hmm. As a thought. I, I just now had that thought. So. Mm. Um, another important thing about this is... Some of the gods have been seen play in like some top eight decks. Okay, you see it occasionally. Yeah, yeah you it's see not, it occasionally. It's not entirely uncommon. Um, now, I will say a thing before we go on about this card. Sort of my my quick argument for it is that 
soon, in the next few months, mm-hmm. Hero's Downfall rotates out of standard. Can, I think we'd agree Hero's Downfall is the best removal card in standard. Either mm-hmm. that or Murderer's Cut, but probably Hero's Downfall. Um, so you think maybe when, after uh, Theros rotates, possibly. things are going to slow down enough to where this four-mana instant removal is actually right. more relevant. The issue that I have with that statement, though, mm-hmm. is that once those sets, once Theros rotates out, we also lose Communion with the Gods, we lose uh, Seda Wayfinder, so we lose some of the ways that we put cards into the graveyard. Yeah. You know, which which that makes this card better, being able to mm-hmm. pitch stuff into your graveyard. Um, again, like you said, it doesn't put it in the battlefield, but it's still nice to have a, a good selection of things to return mm-hmm. and kill a guy with. Um, but there's there's just something about this card. Uh, I don't say that off. Notice, I've said this before, I hate magic cards. I hate 90% of magic cards, and they're all bad. But there is something about this card that I, I can't stop thinking about it. I always come back to to foul mm-hmm. renewal this is a, this is i i think this might be a contender man we might see this at some point in the future maybe not right now or anything but at some point in the future we might see this all right so devin's calling it and yeah. i'm not seeing it so yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll there's one vote for and one against it's, you guys are the deciding vote let us know in the comments if how do you feel about foul renewal exactly yeah That's but we can move on foul tongue invocation Mm, this is mm. the next series in those Reveal a Dragon card. It's actually not that bad in Limited. Like, no. game for life for three mana as as they sacrifice a creature at instant speed yeah. is not bad. That's icing yeah, on the th- cake. This one is the least dependent on Revealing a Dragon of yeah, that whole like, cycle. It's completely good. Yeah, you I mean, will you be don't... able to get all the value you need out of it from like, three Gaming for life is fine, creature. but just... You know, edict effects is what we call yeah. these. Edict effects are always good, you know, especially in sealed. This is quite good. So, and, and also in this sealed, they're slightly better because there's an increased chance that there's going to just be giant creatures on the other side of the board, you know. Like, that sacrifice effect is going to be more relevant and harder for, a harder choice for them to make. So, I do like Foul Tongue. All right, here's another Foul Tongue card. Honestly, <laughs> weird, weird Foul Tongue. Mm-hmm. I just like to imagine that he goes around cursing all the time, you know. I don't want to spend too much time on this because it kind of looks janky. Mm-hmm. But Foul Tongue Shriek, um, we were talking about how Damnable Pact gives you that couple of extra points of damage you need to finish out aggro. Mm-hmm. I think that you could make the argument this does the, the same thing. In Sealed, I don't know about it because I feel like it's a wasted slot a little bit. You're yeah. not going to like win the game off the back of it or anything. Unless you happen to have just the lowest mana curve of creatures in Sealed. Yeah. That you can play in like between two, maybe three colors. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it in sealed either. Mm-hmm. But in you know a standard deck where you play warriors or something, you try to plan around something like this. Yeah, I I, I could see my call would be I could see play testing with this, but ultimately probably it would get cut. You know, but um, this this is at least interesting enough to to test with. Maybe a silver bullet. You know, I wouldn't play four of this or anything. Yeah, not only that, but at one mana, it's really actually pretty. Potentially really good because I can be like between two creatures that's a shock. Yeah. Uh, between three, it's a lightning bolt. Yep. Between four, yep. You're doing uh, uh, stoke the flames. You know, stoke the flames at one mana. So, at one mana. But that's all I'm gonna say about Foul Tongue Tree for now. I, I I I'm interested in this card, but ultimately I think it's probably not an inclusion. Ultimately, we'll uh, see. Uh, limited, no. In standard, I'm actually gonna call this. We will see this card in standard. In some form of uh, black dual color aggro list, it, uh, we've been talking uh, talking about red black aggro. Yeah, and um, this will slot into that very pretty well. Nice. I mean, you get all the one drops in red black aggro. Exactly. You know? So this seems good. Maybe. Uh, not only that, but you get uh, Ravel Master and yep. Leveling Outburst yep. and Dragon Fodder. Yeah, all know. the all the tokens generate. That's another thing is with token generators, this this plays very well. Uh, Grave Purge. Three mana instant. Put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library. Draw a card. Hmm. We have seen this effect before. You're this is this is a reprint with a different name. I actually did not know that. Yeah. For starters, um, I know it was in like Mirage, and then later on in something else, but it was a different name. At best, you might want this one bomb creature back, so you can put that on top and then draw it. Yeah. But. And then I mean, know, in, that, in that way, it's a raised dead for two more mana than a raised dead, you know. And that would be kind of meh. Although there is always the trick with this card used to be to not put any creatures on top of your deck. Uh, yeah, just, and just draw, draw a card. card. Um, I can totally see that. Yeah. I can totally see that. So, uh, so yeah, that that 
is actually kind of great in a limited format like that. Because yes. it has three black mana at instant speed and draw a card. Yep. And there's and no drawback. There's no drawback to drawing the card. And and it's flex because, you know, if you do need to put creatures on top, which you sometimes, you'll need to do that occasionally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I don't hate Grave Purge, but I don't particularly like Grave Purge either. I think it's kind of a wasted, maybe a wasted slot a little bit. You know. It depends on your limited pool. Yeah, that's true. If you have better stuff, I don't want the kind of, yeah. I don't <laughs> want the kind of limited pool where I'm like excited about Grave Purge. Yeah. But you got to look at it from that fishbowl sometimes. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Moving on, we get Hand of Silumgar. Hand of Silumgar is good. Hand of Silumgar is quite good, especially yeah. in limited. I'm mostly talking limited here. Yeah. But I do like um, in standard and constructed. I like Air of the Wilds from Cons. He's a two man of two two Death Touch, mm -hmm. and he's got a ferocious ability. You know, so he's he's got a lot more icing than this guy. Um, strictly better in a lot of ways, but this is still quite good. This yeah. is still quite good. You can make an argument that if that card sees standard play, that, that maybe this card has some kind of place. But at the very least, in limited, this is very, very good. Oh, yeah. Um, two mana, two, one, death touch. Although, before we move on, I like to say I do like Typhoid Rats better. <laughs> Everyone likes Typhoid Rats better. Well, I mean, you pay one less mana, you get basically the same card. Yeah. You know? The, the thing with this is that you can intimidate with it. Like, you can swing in and be like, block it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, I mean, you can do that with Typhoid Rats, too, but you get double the damage off of this guy. Um... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. The guy's good. <laughs> Hedonist Trove. Yeah, Hedonist Trove. Have it. Uh, yeah. This is such a fun card. It's absolutely. It, it, it's such a fun card. It's absolutely. Yeah, this is a party card right here. <laughs> I totally love this card. This and is I the totally... card that when you played Commander, everyone at the table except the guy you targeted is like, oh! Go ahead. Um, I know you have some things to say about Trove. Uh, I love Hedonist Trove. I'm going to try and build with it just for a casual thing. Yeah. I do not expect this to see play in standard, um, or anywhere outside of... I don't see it this... Uh, outside of tabletop play, yep. ca casual tabletop play, I really don't see this making play anywhere. Expect to see this at the lunch table. Mm -hmm. But that's what I plan to do with it. I plan to do a casual deck that is just all about the mill and this. Yeah. That's what it's for. That's yeah. what it's for. I mean, I would hate that if Hedonist Trove was like a huge card in standard a month from now, but it won't be, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, Trove. Trove is the most fun card ever, but you won't play it. Mm -mm. You won't play it. You won't get to that much mana. Ever. So. I anywhere. Uh, if I get this in limited, I'm, I would sooner, I'm not going to tear it up. I'll, I'll put it in a buy I'm, I would. Like you're it, not playing this in limited. Now, no. conversely, if this was, you can do that with your graveyard, Yeah. that would be quite a good card. But, as we see now, I, don't, I wouldn't get too high for eating this joke. Mm -hmm. um, up next is Kolagon Skirmisher. He is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two in black. We don't see that every day. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, he's meh. Meh. You know, he's this is the only time in history you've ever been able to dash in your scathe zombies. Yeah. Your 2-2 two -two vanilla guy. I mean, I just, I don't even like this guy. Uh -uh. You know? Because he dashes for one more than it costs to hard casting. Yeah. I don't really I get it in this case. Mm -mm. I, I would rather this guy be like one of the bulk rares that we get that dashes for like one if he dashed for one he'd be fine actually if he dashed for one he'd be really good yeah yeah he wouldn't be broken or anything mm -hmm. but he would see standard play if he dashed for one I'll tell you that right now meringue river skeleton the lemon meringue yeah we get another one uh, two mana one one they can regenerate in limited that is a fine blocker all day yeah regenerate is a very good ability in limited everywhere else set it on fire it's a terrible card <laughs> So, up next is another card similar to that. we got Marsh Hulk. This is um, Undead Minotaur, but it Megamorphs. Mm -hmm. So yet another strict upgrade of a fine limited card um, that will not see play anywhere outside of that ever again. Ever, ever. Marsh Hulk is terrible outside of limited, but a fine limited card with his giant ass yeah, and decent I, power, you know. I wish his Megamorph was just one less. It's freaking seven! Yeah, it's one more than it costs to... We, we complain about those seven mana dragons that you make a morph up for seven, and they mm -hmm. get encountered every other dragon. This is, this is way worse than those, and we complain about those. So. Yeah. But still, but he's, he's got a great body. But it's four six. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a good body. So probably the best thing we could ever say about this card is he actually... His name is Marsh Hulk. He actually looks like the Hulk. You know. Yeah. He's like, true. smash! You know. I don't... Not, not only do I not like him when he's angry, I don't I, like him at all. We got, uh, um, this is yours. Yeah, this is mine. This is Mind Rot. Fine reprint. Hey, Mind Rot. It's back. On. Best art ever on Mind Rot? Maybe. I really best like it. Art that I, uh, best art that I can recall seeing right now. Best art 
for foil of any mine rot. <laughs> Definitely. That, that would look really sweet in foil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd look real sweet. So I'll, I'll let you have the next card, because that didn't count. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Minister of Pain. Three mana, two, three... Sounds like a professional wrestler, you know, Minister of Pain! <laughs> That's great. And, uh, Minister of Pain, 3-2-3. Three, three. Yep. He's, uh, you know, 3 mana 2 threes are fine. Yeah, and he gets, uh, Exploit, and, uh, it's creatures your opponent's control get neg one neg one until end of turn. So that's potentially a 1-1, one, one, you know, board wiper for yeah. the, uh, that gets rid of the 2-mana 1-1 one, one regenerate yeah. that we just saw. Sort of the high-profile bolster <laughs> targets that we see. Yeah. You know? um, this gets rid of some stuff. It gets rid of plenty of things, yeah. so... I think it's fairly relevant and limited because you're going to play two, three mana, two threes anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't like having to exploit a guy to get that added effect. That's that's my problem with exploit altogether, though. Mm. So, I don't know. He, It's icing on the she's, cake. She's one. technically better than, yeah. than three mana, two threes, so I'd probably, you know, I'd probably give her a chance at least. Um, up next uh, is... I think this one's mine. Oh, yeah. Can I take... Okay. This one is Pitiless Horde. And I think maybe, have, I don't know that we've talked about this card yet uh, together, but I think this card might break through. I think it has a better chance of breaking through than Master of the Feast, which was a double yep. black and one colorless 5-5 five, five yeah, flyer. Didn't, I, didn't, I don't know if you saw my spoiler on that, but when, this, when I spoiled this card, I compared mm -hmm. it to Master of the Feast. It's, it's, it is better than Master. It doesn't do its combat damage more. Like, like Master flies, you know, yeah. the evasion Master, is important. Yeah, Master flies, but it gives your opponent the uh, card advantage, which yep. you don't want to do. You never so want to that's do that. why it never saw play. It's a three mana five three, where you just lose two life at your upkeep. Uh, there's the three mana three three flyer, which is uh, Herald of Torment, and that mm -hmm. sees play. Occasionally, so, yeah. Yeah, so this being a five three, more than relevant. Yeah, more sucks than that it doesn't have any sort of evasion or anything, but I don't know. I think that people will test. It sucks. It's a berserker, not a warrior. This could just as easily have been a warrior. You yeah. know, that would have been fine. But I don't know. Maybe a chance. I mean, he's either fifty cents or he's three dollars. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's not going to get much higher than that. Yeah, moving right along, uh, Carsey Sadist, two mana, one three. So those are traditionally good. We yeah, we always see play. This has icing on the cake in that exploit. Mm. Yeah, but it's drain too. This is that nasty icing, because I, you know, exploit uh, should be so good, but it's like I don't want to sacrifice a guy, yeah. and they lose two life. Like I don't. So that's not good enough to lose a guy. I get that you gain two, but like it's just not good enough to lose a guy. I play this as a two mana one three, mm -hmm. and that's a boot it, you know. But I hate I, that's that's my least favorite exploit ability or exploit in the entire set. Yeah. Pretty, pretty definitely. Up next, uh, Rakshasa Gravecaller. Five mana, three, six with exploit. And when he's exploited, you get two, two, two zombie tokens. I kind of like it. Uh, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. I'm in favor of that. I think that's a great uncommon. Normally, with demons, we get a really bad drawback. Just having to sacrifice a guy for this effect is not exactly a drawback. Well, you look at this as five mana for seven power. Yeah. But you're losing some of your onboard power to do that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm i simultaneously a fan and not impressed. It's kind of a weird play. There's seven power spread amongst three creatures and six toughness on this guy. That That's all very good. That's all very good. And getting three creatures for the price of one, that yeah. seems fine, you know. Up next, we have a Reckless Imp. Reckless Imp is, I think he's kind of bad. Now, in the dash deck, he's good because yeah. he's your evasion. He'll probably net you four, mm -hmm. maybe six damage over the course of the game. And that's good, but he doesn't, he's, he flies at a low cost, but doesn't block huge dragons in a set full of huge dragons. And I can't get over that. Yeah. You know? Um, as well as, like, the 1-1 one, one double strike flyer in white. Mm -hmm. uh, there's can't so many, like, decent flyers in this. Uh, cycle for limited and everything. Mm. No. Like, again, if you're building the dash deck, this is one of the only evasion guys you'll have, and yeah. that's fine. He may deal six damage for you over the course of the game, mm -hmm. but that's the only thing I think he goes in. You know, yeah. I, I don't think he goes anywhere else. Uh, next up, we get Risen Executioner. I... I certainly don't like it. For now. If that black enchantment that lets us make zombie tokens becomes a thing... Right then yes. Like, between these two cards, there's enough synergy, maybe. Yep. 
because... Oh, definitely, because that card makes him cost less to play out of the graveyard, and your zombies get the plus one, plus one. You know, all of these are very good. Yeah. He's, got, he's got synergy with that card. Yeah. So that's potential to make these kind of cards work. Okay. I can see how they can work together. Also, of note, strangely, he's a warrior. Yeah, that is weird. <sighs> but he, he is. This has... Which is why, if this was like other zombies slash warriors... Since it, yep. did, you know, if it did both of his types, that would be cool. Yeah. Then yes, I would, I would like that a lot. Especially since he's mythic rare. Yeah. No, this looks like the bulk mythic, bulk, bulk mythic of the set. Looking at it, but you know, we've got as far as zombies go, we've got that enchantment we just talked about. We got blood soaked champion, which comes back. It won't be in your graveyard, is what I'm saying. Yeah. This guy that we got coming up is a one mana zombie. So yeah. who is relevant? And so we see some things. We see some things with um, executioner. I it looks better than he did it at when we first. Got him spoiled. He's relatively early spoiled. And in limited, um, I will say that there's zombie synergy. You could build, so you could try and focus on a, a zombie style synergy deck with this. Between the exploit guy that gives you the two 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 zombies that'll yep. become three threes, um, and a there's, there's a guy coming up here yeah, saying that's a yeah, zombie. There, uh, yeah. There's two guys coming up that are zombies. Yeah. So yeah. I mean maybe maybe. I don't like cards that can't block. In limited, mm -hmm. but I think he might get over that hump a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So maybe risen as execution, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Now here's a decent card. This is self inflicted wound, mm -hmm. and it probably will see standard play definitely in sideboards, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but this does lots of stuff for you. If I say siege rhino one more time, I'm going to throw up. But this again, siege rhino. Yeah. But um, aside from that, this this gets a lot of good stuff. We see, you know, green devotion is a huge thing. Tramoka. Tramoka. Um, yeah, because you don't have to target the guy. So, yeah, I can see this. There's still there's still gods, like we were talking about earlier. They can you know, make them sacrifice a god. So, yeah. there's things. There's okay. things. All day. And you were talking about, you know, you, you were upset, and rightfully so, that one card, the only thing it really can't take out is creatures with hexproof, i.e. fleece main lion. Mm -hmm. this, this gets rid of your hexproof guys, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, screw you, Ajutai. <laughs> <laughs> but, any, uh, anything to add on Wound? Uh... I wish it was instant. Yeah, no, that's that's the one serious issue with the card. Yeah. Aside from that, uh, fine. It's just fine. Yeah. Fine little edict effect with some icing on it. Uh, like a little sideboard color hoser. Yeah. Moving right along, Shambling Goblin, black one one zombie, and dies target creature and opponent controls gets neg one neg one until end of turn. We've yeah. seen this plenty of times. Yeah, he um, looks like Mog Fanatic at first glance, you know. But mm -hmm. Mog Fanatic was you sack him, he deals damage to a target. So this is this is way worse. Yeah. But he can still take out a guy, and it's worth noting in limited that he takes out two toughness guys, you know, when he blocks them. Yeah, this so. is true. Um I'm trying to think of the last time I saw this. I think it was a uh, fume spitter. This is the closest thing I have to this. Oh yeah, I remember that card. I'm vaguely. And these cards do see play in limited, so hmm. outside of that, I don't know. But you know, this guy works with Risen Executioner. Yep. Huzzah to that! So, and so does the next guy. Yep. Uh, you want me to this take is, this one? I'll grab this guy. This is Sibsig because I like the word Sibsig. <laughs> Sibsig Icebreakers. This is a three mana two three. We talk about that being good. And when it enters the battlefield, everyone discards a card. So, you know, messes them up, fuels your delve, and all that mess. So, mm -hmm. this may be fine, but only fine. You only fine. This is like a 22nd or 3rd card. It's yeah. Definitely, you don't look at it and go, Simpson cards, yes! You know, you're, you're not like hella excited about this, but it's fine. Moving on, Sadisi, Undead... Uh, Vizia. Vizia. Like Jafar. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks, I, he kind of looks like Jafar in his outfit. I, okay, I'm just going to call this guy Jafar, Jafar for the rest of the video. Yep, he should be Jafar in standard from now on, if he is in standard. <laughs> um, Tony and I think differently. I actually like this guy a little bit more than Tony does, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. He... Devin's a bigger fan of this one. Um, I, I'm okay with a f uh, four six death touch for five mana, in limited. Uh, the exploit effect making him a tutor on a stick. Um, if we find some synergy for exploit, then I can see him being great. It, he'll yeah. be exactly what the deck wants. Because exactly. He's going to be able to go grab yeah, if, whatever. If you can get, you if need. you can turn that exploit into gravy, he's fantastic. Yeah, you know, and so I can leaving see it being, being able to tutor for whatever you want and leaving behind a relevant four six death touch body, that's so good. Five mana is not that much to ask for that. I don't, right. I don't think. Uh, now maybe in standard we have better stuff. Tassiger is a better card than this if you're looking at similar-ish cards like casting cost to PT mm -hmm. ratio, 
but I definitely think that this also may have a chance. I don't think we see a single true standout card in black. But if I was rating the cards in black, this would be in the top five. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let us know what you feel about Sidisi because we're split. You guys can be the deciding vote on that one, too. Coming up next, we're almost done here. This is a Silumgar Assassin, and he is pretty cool. I like this guy, you know? Oh, yeah. Definitely like this guy. I hate that it's power three or less. And you have to work really hard to get it. You have to pay three and then pay three to flip him up. And But, you know, he kills a guy. Yeah. So he's fine. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I don't know about standard at all. Not unless morph decks become a thing. Yeah, if they do, then maybe. But even if they do, then the black morph deck probably won't be a thing, you know? <laughs> Salumgar Butcher. Uh, let's see. 5 mana 3-3 three, three with exploit and... Yeah, potentially takes out a guy when you exploit. Yeah, seems good. Um, it's fine. For sealed. Seems good. Yeah. The only problem I have is usually guys like this are really good mm -hmm. in sealed, but... You have to kill one of your own guys to take out one of their guys. guys. So, I don't know. It really, seems worse than usual. It's technically one for... Using this is a one for it's one It's a one effect. for one. Yeah. I mean, you get to choose what guy you kill. Yeah. You know? So, there's a lot of choice in it for you, but I don't like him as much as I normally like cards like this, but I'd probably still play him. Oh, yeah. Him, ultimately. Okay. Coming up next is Akud Cobra. Um, we really won't say much about this, but I do like this card. He's strictly better than Pillarfield Ox, which is a fine 23rd card on its own. He's got one more toughness, and he's got a very, very relevant ability on the ground. Yeah, so. Death Touch. He's going to be able to kill anything he blocks. Yep. And, and stick around a lot of the time. Yeah, and stick around a lot of the time. And then if anything does happen to kill him, he's definitely killing it yep. too. Unless it's got first like, strike. Remember in um, the Scorpion in Sealed, the 1-3 three for 3 mana Scorpion that had Death Touch in Sealed? Everyone played that guy in Sealed. Mm -hmm. This is just one mana more, and you get an extra power, two extra toughness. Like this, That guy's really good. So. Alright, y'all. Um, I think it's yours. Uh, we get a reprint of Ultimate Price, which is just fine. Yeah, though this I'm, is good. Yeah. This will see main deck play right. in some things. So. Uh, and plenty of things. Yeah, like Monster maybe Blue Black Control. Yeah, kills oh. Monastery Mentor, kills Rabble Master, yep. kills so many good things. Oh, it so kills a hundred good things, dude. Just relevant yeah. things that come to mind. Because yeah, I've kills been on a Tassiger, uh, Wingmate Rock. I could probably do this all day, too. It yeah. kills a lot of stuff. Hornet Queen, Arbor Colossus. Um, we could keep going, but we won't because it kills, you know, about six tenths, or let's say 70%. It's it ultimate kills, price and it's yeah. been done before. It kills 65 mm -hmm. to 70% of the relevant creatures in standard, so this is a good card. Mm -hmm. Doesn't kill Seed Rhino, but well, whoever. Next is Virulent Plague. Now, the question with this card is is it better than Drown in Sorrow? <clears throat> it's more splashable than Drown in Sorrow. Right. But... And it's not its not a one-shot. This is an enchantment. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Does I, it... I feel like it is. Because you only have to get one of these out there for it to become relevant. And yeah. if you get more than that, then that's uh, neg four, neg four. So that eliminates some of the things that we have that let you put tokens like, of creatures this, into play. Yeah, like Monastery Mentor is crying right now because yeah. of this card, you know? Like, this, it just a, seriously, just forever, mm -hmm. they can't play tokens, more or less. Yeah. You know? And this, I think this is fine. I think it'll see board play in standard, more than likely. Mm -hmm. You know, see a lot of good support in black, but no, like, real standout bombs or anything. But this this is one of the better cards. Drown in Sorrow is very good, and it busts up more aggro strategies than I, this will. But I'm when we're talking about tokens specifically, this is very good. Is Well, yeah, the last two cards are slightly more boring, but yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, we got... Uh, Vulturous Aven. This is the kind of exploit I can get behind, by the way. Yeah, four yeah. mana, two, three, and, um, when you exploit him... Oh, and he's got flying, which is... Yeah, flying, relevant. flying, man. He's not just a three mana, two, three exploit guy to finish off the thing. He actually has flying for one extra mana, so that's relevant. When uh, you exploit, you sign in blood. Yeah. When you exploit, that's good. That's, to me, that's one of my favorite exploit cards in the whole set. Yeah. For limited, obviously. Sign and blood on a flying stick, and it's a common. Yeah. I'm in favor. I'm, 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 I can get down with that. I F's with that. Moving yeah. on is something that I am not in favor of. Nope. But I love the flavor. I do too. It's just <laughs> a big old turtle tomb going to be. Yeah. So, Wandering Maybe. Tomb Shell is a four mana one six that doesn't do anything else. Yeah. It's a plus one plus one bonus from your Risen Executioner. But <laughs> aside from that, yeah, this, this just kind of sits around your side of the board like, Word. Yeah, it, it blocks all the things, and that's it. That's it, yeah. It'll kill one toughness, guys, and you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> what a stupid card. Like, they should make sure that 
All cards that um, are the last thing alphabetically in a color are somewhat exciting. <laughs> it's a weird design limitation to put on, uh, them, but yeah, you should. Speaking of that's it, though, I, that's probably it. Yeah, that's, well, that's it. We'll have the video up for uh, blue tomorrow. Blue's next, and blue is a very interesting color in Dragons of Tarkir. The last, the last two colors, blue and white, here are going to be, those, those are both very good colors. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, in advance, because I have so many things to say about blue. Yeah, yeah, blue might be a little bit longer than some, because I've got some things to say. But I think blue is one of the more interesting colors, so we can be forgiven if we talk slightly longer uh, about blue. And we've said it before, blue is, between the two of us, uh, one of our favorite Easily, colors. easily, both of our favorite I would say. Yeah. Um, definitely. So, yeah, we're excited for that, and you guys should be too. Keep checking in with SPMTG. You know what to do. Comment. Leave those comments in the thing where there's a thing for you to comment on the things. And uh, like, share, and, of course, subscribe, because that does us a lot of good. And then you'll be able to hang out with us mm -hmm. whenever we put a new video out. We like hanging out with you guys. If we can get enough subscribers going in the future, maybe we can start a podcast. Yeah, we've been thinking about a podcast. I've been thinking about doing um, subscriber giveaways. If anyone's interested mm. in that, you know, get us to 150 or 200 subscribers and we'll give you a play mat or something like, you know, like let us know how, what you guys feel about that. We're really into y'all's input, just in case you didn't know. It's important to us, very much so. Very and much. we love, the last thing I'll say before we end this video here, I think, this, this applies to both of us, definitely, is that... Um, we're still a relatively small channel. When we see your comments like, good video, guys, nice vid, and all this, this really helped, and all, that makes our entire week. Yeah. You know? That so, makes the, uh, you know, hour, all the hours we put into shooting and editing. Editing. Really worth this. Seriously, neither of us had edited a YouTube video before we started this channel. It is, if you ever want to start a YouTube channel, just a quick tip, it's a lot of editing. It is hours and hours of editing. So, when you guys leave comments like that, it really, it really does. It sounds mushy, but it makes it worthwhile. Yeah. So, thank you guys. A whole heck of a lot. I'm Dev. And I'm Tony. We'll see you guys tomorrow with Blue. Thanks, Wizards.